So today we are going to look at the range of motion. There is actually two ranges of motion, one we call active and one we call passive. In the passive range of motion, we need help to get into that end range. And that help comes um, from the external. So it's either hands pulling something or we're using belts if our hands are not long enough or we're just using gravity to help us going deeper into poses and just sort of dump ourselves as deep as we can. And so those, um, this passive range of motion definitely is deeper than the active one. Because in the active one, we actually only rely on our strength to get to that end range of motion and we don't need the external help of the things mentioned before. Now we should try to bring those two together and not have too much of a gap between where can we get in the active and in the passive range of motion. Think about it as a balance uh, between strength and flexibility. So if you're just super flexible, you're gonna have a very big passive range of motion but uh, the active range of motion will be actually very small because you're lacking the strength. Um, the combination of strength and flexibility is nowadays called mobility and there is a lot of mobility training that offers a different way how to look at stretching and offers sort of more active stretching. When you actually have to use your strength, you have to contract and activate your muscles while you're stretching them. You can search for PNF stretching or for loaded stretching to look further into that. Now the passive stretching also might have its place in your practice, but just don't overdo it and make sure that you're always keeping those two in balance because if you reach an imbalance, it's much easier to get injured. So here's some concrete examples. You can be either really pulling your legs to try to bring them close to your face while the legs are doing nothing and all the work is done with your arms. Or you can do PNF stretching which is a combination of contracting the muscle that you're trying to stretch and then releasing it and stretching it further and then contracting it again so you can use a belt or any other prop to really um, reach where you can while keeping the whole muscle active and contracted in a stretching position. We also love to use binds to sort of push ourselves a little bit, especially into deeper twists. Uh, but again, you're not doing very much with your torso, so why don't you try to grab a TeraBand instead and see where do you go, where can you twist when there is actually a resistance um, and you can play, of course, with how heavy or light the TeraBands are. So instead of just pushing yourself there with, um, with your hands. And here is an example how can you use gravity. So either you can go into Trikonasana and really just dump into there and collapse onto the floor and really go into your end range of motion. Or you can go there carefully, making sure that you're actually not dumping any of your weight towards the floor. You're not supporting yourself on your arm, but your hamstrings are actually working really hard the whole time and so does your side body to keep you to keep you in that shape and the same thing you can also do in forward fold so instead of using the gravity to go as low as you can you're using it the other way around so you're resisting the gravity while stretching your hamstrings they actually have to work really hard to support you where you are and then you can play around with your arms to opt in the difficulty. And the same goes also for the front body. So you can do a lunge to try to stretch your hips and just go really deep. Use the gravity to push you really deep and low. 
or you can work reversely with the gravity and um, do so-called diagonal stretch. And when you are actually stretching your whole front body and your hip flexors, but actually you're resisting the gravity the whole time and you have to fight it, so the whole front body is becoming stronger at the same time as it's becoming flexible. And this is my own experimentation in downward facing dog. So where is the strength and where is the support if I really try to uh, go as close to the floor as I can with my chest? And then what would happen if I remove one arm? Would I actually be able to support myself while I'm in that position or do I have to sort of find a different curve in my back? to find that strength in the shoulders and the integrity with the rest of the body. And other great tools that I like to use are a band or weights. So when you're going into your stretch, just try using a band. And especially when you're coming up, there is a lot of resistance that you have to fight to come back up. And it's the same thing with the weights. So if you're coming really slow and eccentrically lengthening the muscle while it's being loaded, it's also becoming stronger while it's becoming flexible. So the principles are quite simple and there's definitely a million exercises on the internet that you can try to have a look at or you can just try to experiment for yourself and try to uncover what are your weaknesses, what are your habits and how could you work perhaps a little bit differently or more smartly um, with these principles.